Hello there, Internet. Steve here again with another Unity Asset Store review. Um, today, we are going to be looking at the Complete City Asset Pack by, and I apologize ahead of time because I'm going to almost guaranteeably butcher the surname, but by Esteban or Esteban uh, Cizali, Cizali, I think. And if I said that wrong, I, again, deeply apologize. Um, that one's a little bit of a tricky one. Um, at the time of writing this, this asset retails for $70 USD. Uh, this asset supports uh, all three rendering pipelines, built-in, um, universal, and HDRP. Um, and then, uh, so let's go right into the, um, the uh, reviews, or the, you know, points that I review on. Uh, as a reminder, I only do pass-fail. In my opinion, something is either good enough or it is not. So um, just pass fail. So on the quality, uh, quality passes. Um, I I think that uh, the quality is good. Um, it's not high res. It's not like a, a high definition um, asset pack. It's also not low poly. It's kind of somewhere in between. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, but but I do think it passes. I I think the quality of it is is is, is good. Uh, modularity and workability. Um, I'm passing it on this with caveats. So um, we'll get into those caveats in more detail when we go into both the demo scene run through and the um, the prefab. There isn't an asset manifest scene, so we're just going to go through the prefabs like in the inspector. Um, so when we go through that part, I'll go into some of that detail too. But the long and the short of it is um, my my big critique about it is that there's uh, I don't remember how many buildings off the top of my head. It there's like twenty four of them I think listed, but there are variants of buildings, so it's technically less. Um, but the buildings are all one mesh, so each building is its own mesh, and um, so. And and then they provide like individual um, like walls that you can make your own insides with, but the shell of the building with the exterior and interior walls are one piece. Uh, the stairwells are baked into that, as are the elevator shafts in the buildings that have them, which I believe is all of them. If memory serves. Um, so that is what it is um the variants are nice um they are shells but you can modify the insides of them with the walls that they provide to provide again like like unique interiors um uh on top of that so 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 that's kind of a it's not a red flag because that's that's fine as long as you don't mind that sort of thing um i i don't mind it especially if you want to rapidly you know build out levels it, it's actually probably better that way um but but yeah, I, I again I, I am gonna pass that one because I do think that it's um that it's fine, all things considered. Um the other thing is they have a lot of uh set pieces and clutter, like both level clutter and actual clutter, like garbage that you can put on the streets and stuff. So and the way that they modularize that stuff out and the way they modularize the fire department out, which I'll go into detail when we're actually in the um prefabs uh, uh breakdown um those are all really smart so i am going to pass it in modularity and workability uh support and serviceability uh it's fine it passes the developer seems to respond so uh, I, I i don't think there's anything wrong with that and then value um i do think that this passes uh, you know, at, at, at $70, I would almost say it's underpriced, honestly, for the amount of stuff you get. Um, you'll see the amount of prefabs you get when we go into that part of the video, but um, th there's a lot there. And I, I honestly think the developer could have, could have probably gotten away charging a little bit more, if I'm being honest, um, be because I do think that the value is there. So those are the four uh, acceptance criteria. Um, next, we're going to be going into the um, uh, demo scene run through, and then we'll go from there. So I will see everybody over in the demo scene shortly. Alrighty, and we are back. So a couple of things. I'm not going to go into every single building here. There are um, some things to consider with that, I guess. Like these are, there's a, 
there is some like overlap on how the buildings are so i'm just going to peek into some of the windows and stuff but all of them have this kind of um just general shell all of them have an or at least most of them have an elevator shaft we'll get into why the shell is important or why i'm okay with that being the case uh when we go into the next part of the video which is going to be looking at the individual prefabs for the time being we're just going to run through here real quick we're going to look at um we're going to look at a couple of these you know buildings interiors and then we're going to hop out and um look at the prefabs individually so there there's a well i should point this out first i guess um see like all of these buildings are relatively tall and aside from the buildings like like that one like the ones around the periphery all of the other buildings have full interiors so there's a lot of things being uh drawn right now and combine that with the fact that there is um a a decent amount of uh, computational stuff being used up by my screen recording software as well because I'm still dealing with that battle. Um, things are going to be a little choppy with this, but um, there is a lot to these to these buildings, a lot of like stuff, a lot of stuff to actually draw as you can see over on the right side as well. Uh, but um, yeah, we'll we'll deal with that. If it becomes choppy, I do I do apologize. But I did want to point out a few key things in some of these buildings. So like here, all of them have elevators. The elevator itself, or elevator shafts, the elevator itself is a separate piece. I did delete some doors out of buildings so we could go inside of them. So I did, like this is a, this normally has four doors, two on each side. I deleted the one off the right side here so we could just peek in here. Um, but this is, this actual elevator is its own its own like like prefab and if you look um there are two doors per side so if you wanted to animate those if you wanted to animate those like an actual um like an actual elevator you could um one of the things i did notice about this is that so well the well the scaling for the buildings themselves seems 100 percent spot on um, and the door frames and stuff like that. The scaling for this out for like a lot of the clutter does not. Like this desk is way too high, the chair is way too big, the water cooler, all of these things are way too big. This one, eh, not so much. Maybe you could get away with that. But the truth is, like a lot of these other clutter pieces, like the desks and chairs and stuff, those scalings are off, I believe. So, um, but, but that's an easy fix. You just literally change the scaling on it and you're fine. Um, so that is something to just be aware of on the clutter stuff. You may have to change scaling. Um, so just, like I said, be aware of that. Um, uh, a lot, like I said, a lot of, I, I went through and removed some doors, but, um, yeah, like all of these have actual elevator shafts and all of them have stairwells. Um, I'm not going to go up every single stairwell either because that would take forever and I respect your guys' time too much. But you can kind of see how like the empty shells of the of these look versus um, some of these will have actual like stuff inside of them like that bank did. So we'll look at those in a little closer detail as well. But also be, be mindful of these sewer grates because at the end of here... Uh, we will hop into one of the sewers, or we'll hop down one of the sewer grates back where we started, and we will uh, check out what the sewers actually look like um, as well, or the, you know, subterranean tunnels. <clears throat> um, so there are variants of the outsides of these. Ooh, come on. There we go. Obviously, my stuff works. So the colliders are set up well. A lot of these buildings are going to look similar just because that's kind of how buildings in downtown environments are to begin with. Um, so down here you've got a lot of actual literal clutter like garbage, uh, scene clutter cans, there's some moldy food containers over here, um, stuff like that. Even these like garbage cans, like garbage cans aren't going to be that high. So yeah, like all of the clutter 
the level clutter I do think is scaled incorrectly. But again, you can you can pretty easily um, I never noticed that before. It's funny. Uh, you can pretty easily um, scale that down. So you got parking stations, bus stops, um, <clears throat> gas gas station stuff, and then you've got the gas station attendant building here, which does have a inside here. Spreadsheet work, good times. Yeah, follow me with audio. You can see how it's not there, but you can see how the water is flowing there. <clears throat> I think, uh, you know what? I gotta go this way. Then we got, so there's ATMs and stuff. Um, so you got your fire department, or your fire station, your you know, bike racks right there. Your fire station is, we'll look at this when we look at the actual prefab, but it's split down the middle. Um, and we'll explore that a little bit when we get to that point. But um, I do want you to consider some of this stuff because um, as we'll see when we get to prefabs, you can build interiors of these buildings with walls that they have put into place, which is nice. Um, some painting and stuff. Uh, and then there's a door up here that leads to the outside. So if I had moved that, we could have jumped off the top. Soda machine. Oh. There we go. Come on, you. <laughs> you kind of see in here how you can separate out the shells with walls and stuff like that. Um, and you can make them look, you can make the interiors look like actually, you know, unique. Um, Versus like this side. Go to the parking garage here. And then we'll go into a mechanic seat. Come on, you. Stand up, fool. There we go. So you've got a stairwell and an elevator here. All interiors, like all actual usable interiors. Um, the stairwell lets off on the next level. They're all lets off over here. And then uh, you got some scaffolding options. The scaffold scaffolding is modularized as well, so we'll dive into that a little bit when the time comes. Um, So yeah, so there's a few different configurations for the building interiors, like the layouts of where stairwells are, how many stairwells, where elevator shafts are, and stuff like that. But all in all, like you're gonna get similar approaches with that sort of stuff. Um, so again, more clutter here. Ooh, 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 there we go lockers stuff like that toilets yeah obviously if if that's how tall a toilet is on you then then there's there's probably some issues um, <laughs> but that's all right uh, like I said you can easily scale that stuff and then let's drop down let's find where we came in here I think it was, oh, it was over here and let's drop right down into that tunnel so you can see what the tunnel looks like and then we will go to the next part of the deal so We've got all of these grates and stuff like that. There's two different types of them. There's that one over there as well. So let's drop down here. Boop. You've got full modularized sewer system that you can build out as well, um, which I deeply appreciate this. I think that this is a really good, um, a really good uh, uh, option for that. So 
Um, that's that. We're going to next go into like so. This this asset does not come with a pre-existing prefab uh, scene, um, or uh, sorry, a, a prefab manifest scene. So instead of making my own scene because that didn't work out well last time, I'm just going to go into the prefabs themselves, and we will explore that in the next part of the video. See you guys there. Alrighty, and we are back with the final part of this video. So, um, first things first here, um, we are going to work backwards because uh, the vegetation is the smallest one. Um, and we're just going to look at a handful of the prefabs. Some of them have a lot of prefabs in them. I'm not going to go into each one of them and explore them, but um, we will... I will try to do it wherever it's 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 relevant. So you got a few different variants of vegetation, which is nice. Uh, here's your tunnels. This is, so these are the tunnels I was talking about. These are your actual sewer pieces. Um, so there are a few different options for these. There's long ones, there's short ones. Um, these ones do not have the uh, thing that goes up, obviously. Um, so you got some end caps. Find the ones that have the actual up pieces. I think. Okay, so you've got a corner. You got corner a corner piece here. So you got those pipe pieces. Um, more pipe pieces. So you've got some stuff for dressing them. You know, with uh, uh, pipes and stuff like that. Lights. Um, Obviously, you got the longer stuff there. I think this is, yeah, here it is. So then you've got your actual um, piece that you can put the, uh, the, um, the two different types of pipes or whatever you want to call them, go, like leading to the top side of the actual level. Um, so a decent amount of options there. Uh, if the developer is going to expand, this is one area that I would like to see them expand in, give more options uh, versus just right and left side facing. There are other just tunnel um, uh, assets out there that I'll be doing, you know, stuff on. Uh, I'll be doing reviews on later if you want, like, really advanced stuff. But the fact that this is ba uh, built into this asset, I do think is very nice. So, a few different options for traffic lights. Um, these traffic lights are, do this, they are animatable and stuff. Um, so you can do, you can do a lot with these. Um, so you can animate the actual walk and don't walk signs. Uh, you can set those up to have scripts to, you know, change however often you want them and all sorts of stuff like that so those sorts of things are doable right out of the box with this um, with just minor minor scripting um let me do it this way and we'll look at them down here so a couple of different uh options actually i could do this too couldn't i yeah so if we do it this way you can kind of see what the differences between them are um right go to the street props so here we've got uh i think yeah so the so this this is what the this was in both the parking garage and in the actually i think it was just i think this is just in the parking garage but it does have triggers built into it um, those weren't quite working because I didn't, there's something you have to do to hook them up to your character controller. I just didn't do that. So whatever it is, what it is, but that is, um, that is built into that as well. You have actual, uh, ballasts, right. Um, or, you know, bollards, uh, uh, to so rumble strips or, you know, parking bumpers. Um, I think this is a. Yeah, an EV charging station. <laughs> um, oh, that's interesting. All right, there we go. So <laughs> if you wanted to put uh, animatable text on something, um, 
you know, whether you were doing like a Times Square clock or something like that, you got that option. Here's that fountain I mentioned. Um, you have to clean that up a little bit, but not that hard to do. Um, so then you've got guardrails, a couple of options for that. A bunch of different street lights, um, you know, variants for that. Um, so you've got different parking uh, uh, meters. Can't even see. Can't even really see that. Can you? God. So yeah. Well, you can see what it is from here. It's a cable. A um, couple of different cable options. Um, you've got the actual um, uh, uh, bulletin boards, and I think yeah. So you can actually swap out what is on the canvas. Um, this is where you could slide that clock in there for the canvas. Um, oops, you got ATMs, which I pointed out in the scene. You've got a few different chair options and stuff like that. You've got uh, chair and bench options. Um, so a few different garbage uh, pieces. There's more garbage down in uh, at least one of the other folders as well. Concrete barriers, power uh, line, you know, power lines, fountains without water in them. Um, so fire hydrant, a bunch of different lanterns, traffic cones, different traffic um, um, uh, uh, warning things, uh, more bulletin boards, so double double side bulletin boards. Um, oh, actually no, this one is a phone. <laughs> They bulletin board on the side. So parking um, um, stuff again. It's also parking. Yeah, this one's also parking. Not much of a difference between this one and that one. Uh, awnings. So a couple of different newspaper, um, uh, newspaper. Uh, what's it called? Um, newspaper. Uh, I can't think of what those are called. Not stands. Newspaper dispensers. We'll, we'll let's call it that. So a couple of different options for those. Uh, a few different bike rack things and stuff like that. Uh, more ballad, ballards, mailboxes, pe uh, pots and stuff like that. Um, garbage bags, garbage cans, all of the stuff you need for like, you know, an outside city. And then you've got boarded up windows or, you know, windows with protective barriers is probably a good way to put that. So uh, let's go into here. I'm not going to dive through every one of these, but you've got a decent amount. And actually, we'll go into here. So these are static. I think there is, I think there's one of them that is swappable. Uh, maybe I was wrong about that. Could have sworn there was one with. Oh, well, there's a sign holder, so you can make your own. I thought there was one that had a customizable canvas on it, but apparently not. Um, maybe I just made that up. <laughs> uh, so more signage. These are going to be actual like street signs and stuff like that. A lot of options for this one. Um, so I actually do think that... There's plenty of signage there. So here's that scaffolding that I mentioned. Um, you've got scaffolding bases, or you could even use this as like bricks up on top of the scaffolding. You've got, you have the scaffolding like um, uh, awnings, you know, uh, the scaffolding itself. Excuse me. Uh, you have that actual center poles if you want to do that. You so you can make your own essentially. Um, then you've got those tarps that we saw. So and then you've got a couple of boards. So I, I do think that the scaffolding stuff, especially, is modularized out in a really smart way. Um, so this is all roof clutter. It's different industrial things that you would see on top of roofs. You kind of saw some of that was implemented when I peeked outside on the. Um, on the what's it called on the um, um, on the, on top of the fire department, so you kind of got an idea for that when I when I did that. Um, again, just lots of different options, and I don't actually don't believe I 
because I know someone's going to ask. I don't think these are, yeah, so so these are single-faced. I did not believe that those were um, uh, Doltad interiors. So, um, let's go to the roads. Lots of road options. I do think the way these are modularized out is very intelligent. You have pretty much everything that you need to create good, um, good uh, roads. Um, so here is, I'm going to point this out. Come on. Oh, psh, being stupid. There we go. I'm going to point this out um, because this is where you're going to start to see, like in those, in those, um, the, what's it called? The, um, the hole in those tunnel pieces, this is what you would slot in there. So you just bloop, plop that right in there. This piece here slots right into that tunnel piece and you're good to go. Um, all right, more roads, just lots of different options for roads. We're gonna to start to see some construction damaged ones at some point here too. Uh, curved roads, here's a construction damaged one. Um, excuse me. So these would be for splitting up the curved uh, uh, roads. So, and then here we have another one of these guys. Ooh. Oh, psh, doing it again. There we go. So this is just another one of those um, particular ones where that is smaller for some reason. Um, so those are more walkway areas or crosswalk areas. Then you get your corner pieces. So yeah, I do think the way that they modularized out the roads was very intelligent, and I, I think that that is definitely worth worth it. Um, so we have more lighting here. Some of this was in there before, but if you want to build your own traffic lights and stuff like that, uh, your own light systems, you do have those as options. Um, uh, so... Yeah, so you can build your own stuff with that, and you've got you know, transformers and stuff like that. Uh, so this is going to be a big one. So this is where we start to get into, and again, these you're going to have to scale down, and you have to play with that based off your character controller. But um, this is where we get into some really good, in my opinion, good quality clutter from a just like volume standpoint. You get a lot of stuff which I like to see. If you watch any of my previous videos, you know how much I love my clutter. Um, and this asset is no different. The amount of clutter in here is, is really, truly great. Um, so you'll notice this does not have the ability to pull those out, but some of the clutter, like I believe the lockers do. So you got bathroom stall uh, doors and stuff here, and then or I guess use for dressing rooms, but you can use them for stall doors. So you've got the corresponding walls for, oh, crap. So you've got the corresponding walls for that as well. Um, so like the divider walls, uh, air conditioning stuff. I don't think the fridge, well, the fridge does have an interior. So kind of see that. Um, so keyboard, don't, yeah, this one does not, this one is single faced, unfortunately, but there are ways to fake that in engine as well. Um, the lockers I believe do have, yeah, lockers do have interiors, so you can do some cool stuff with that. Um, oh. <laughs> ah. so, uh, wall maps. So there's wall clutter, there are paintings. I don't remember, yeah, the microwave does have an interior door or a door that you can uh, animate if you so desire. I think these, these do not. So you have to add your own light source for the lamp, for those lamps. Uh, showers, I don't, I, yeah, that one does not. Um, desks, 
with both of glass. So this one obviously does not have an interior, unfortunately. Bottles, glasses, blinds, all curtains, all manner of curtains. So skip through those real quick. Uh, knives, more curtains. Pot of plant, bowls, spoons, so kitchenware stuff. Oh, it's backwards. There we go. <laughs> um, tablet. So there's a painting. I thought there were more paintings than just that one. Um, I, okay, this does not have an animatable lid. Does this, have a, this does have a trash bin top. So oh, it has an interior. All right. So let's go to the next, so that was interior details, go to the fences, few fences, both broken and non-broken options. Um, so you've got actual chain link fence, metal fence, metal pole fences. Uh, you've got those broken fences there, more chain links, broken chain links. So you've got a couple of different uh, themes for that, which is nice. Lots of doors um, and all of the doors are animatable which is nice, or at least all the ones I looked at are, I believe all of them are. So they have a frame and a door itself, so you can animate those guys. Same thing with the double doors there. So you can animate the handles as well, keypad doors, just a lot of door options. I do like to see this. So you've got your bank vault doors if you want to create a bank vault, uh, jail cell doors if you want to create a police station, You've got your parking garage and overhead doors. So these guys, if memory serves, yeah. So this is actually animatable as well. Um, it's going to look a little funky, but the option is there. Yeah, it's just that. Um, all right, let's go on to the next one. So we got, so, so these are those buildings that were on the periphery that I said. The, like literally none of these have interiors, so. We're just gonna, you'll see they're all single face. These are really just for backdrops. If you really, oh, if you really, really need that. Uh, and that that was unfortunate, so we're gonna close out of that right away. <laughs> um, so, uh, decals, so these are more for like street markings and stuff like that. So you have those if you need them. If you wanna make your own helipad, there was a helipad prefab before. But those options are there. This is your garbage debris. So you got rotten apple cores, food, stuff like that. Lots of different options for that, which is nice. Um, so this is where I said at the very beginning, they broke um, they broke some of this out into two categories. I'm not entirely sure why, but they did. So like there's like doors in there and stuff. Um, there's an oil drum in one of the other ones, but there's a, a different colored one in here. There are lockers, obviously, in the other one, but there's lockers in here. I think power switch. Yeah, there was this. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's the exact same power switch. I think that's the same roll up door as well. So I'm not entirely sure why they broke this out into a separate folder. Um, it's a little. Uh, Annoying because I also don't like clutter in my um, assets, but grander scheme, it, it ain't the end of the world. Um, just deal with it, I guess. Um, so tool holders, uh, spare tires, crap like that, all the actual, you know, tools. Um, and then this is where you start to get into the ability to separate <laughs> um to separate some of the um, some of the the interior of buildings, so um, and there's going to be more of these in the next one as well. But uh, yeah, so you've got the ability to separate the exterior shells of the buildings in unique ways. You can make unique interiors based off of what what is available to you with like just real estate in those shells. 
and then what is actually available um, uh, for wall options as well. I'm not really sure how, I don't know how you would necessarily use this one if I'm being honest, because they don't give you roofs in here to make like actual buildings from scratch. So I'm, I'm not I'm not sure how you would use that one because that looked like it was outside, you know, or there it looked like there were uh, look like there were you know window slots there so I'm, I'm I'm not sure how you would use this one if I'm being entirely honest because uh, again they're they're just there there are not roofs um, but I don't know it's there if you need it <laughs> so now let's go into some of these so this is where we start to get get into the fun end of it I think I'm gonna go into at least the ones that are unique here um, actually, so all of these buildings, obviously, like I said, have have um, uh, full interiors. This one, for example, has two stairwells. It also has two elevators. Um, if we go in here, so this is a slight. This is a different variant of that same one. Um, kind of. I think this one's I think this one's taller. One, two, three, four, five, six versus yeah. <laughs> so you can kind of see this one has two stairwells and two elevator shafts as well. This one is just a variant of that last one. Um, there are color variants, so there's that. Um, here I'll hop into this one. So you've got this one, you've got, uh, again, two stairwells um, and two elevator shafts, but this one definitely is a wider and shorter building than those other ones. This one is definitely a narrower and taller building, but you've got two, two and two in here. Uh, going to here. There's going to be a few different variants of this particular building, so we'll just look at one. Um, And we actually did go inside of one of these when we were running through the level. So that's that one. So you can kind of see the difference in what makes the variance different. It's colors, window placement, stuff like that. Um, I think this one actually, I think, don't remember. Yeah, okay. So this one does have the ability to go onto the roof through an access shaft, which is nice. Not all of them have that. Um, <clears throat> this is just a variant of that one. You kind of see how that one's set up there. Uh, this is a, another variant of that, just a double wide variant of that one, as is this, just different colors again, colors and themes. This one is an extra wide version of that. So same concept, but the door is on the side, so it's a wider version. The doors, rather, are on the side. Now, this is where I think it's important to maybe talk about these things down here. So all of these shells, you can create some, or you, you, you can, you, you like, it looks like there's not a lot of options, right? So it's like, oh, I'm going to have the same empty-looking buildings. But what you do with these, and this is why I definitely gave it a pass on the modularity, um, you have all of these pieces down here. <laughs> and these pieces are specifically designed in a way for you to be able to make interiors in your buildings. Um, so you can make your own rooms in these buildings. Uh, you can make, you can turn this sort of building into a hotel and make small rooms inside of it, right? These pieces give you a lot of options for creating, in my opinion, relatively smart, um, you know, interiors for your buildings. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it will absolutely get you there and it will get you what you need to make those sorts of interiors with these with these shells. So that's a that, that's a big part of why I'm not really upset about the 
the you know the way that some of these are designed um, because you get those interior pieces that you can make individual rooms with so this one another twofer but you've got another roof access here another roof access point so I'll just hop into here and you can kind of see how that's set up it's a separate separate one um, so this is just another variant of that one, another variant of that one. This one is kind of a neat one, a fairly large skyscraper. Um, yeah, this one's got a little bit of an overhang. Another variants of those. So there, yeah, like quite a few of these are variants of the same buildings, but again, with those interior pieces, you can make you can make pretty nifty, um, pretty nifty buildings from what you have available to you. In my opinion, you know, I think that if you're a good level designer, if you're a creative level designer, you can do a lot with these sorts of building or with uh, these sorts of um, uh, shells. Now, something like this. So for this, you've got essentially two storefronts, right? So I would, in a, in a situation like this, you can literally just Put a wall down the middle right and then you've got the ability to split out that you've got two essentially shops on the bottom and you can do some cool stuff with that um where were we we're down yeah so we're down here now so taller versions of it variants of it um i think is this one Different themed on the floors, I can't remember. Some of these are because they look similar, they're a little hard for me. No, I guess not. Okay, um, is that one? It's another skyscraper type. This one just has one elevator shaft, I believe. One stairwell and elevator shaft yeah just one at the very back um oh yeah you've got like this was in another one as well i'm not sure why those are separated out but um so this is where i'm going to point out because this this oh, oh here i'll show this first so this is this is this is the actual elevator that I mentioned. So you've got the actual elevator um, that you just can shove into those elevator shafts. Um, so let's look at the fire station real quick because the fire station is a unique example. I'm not entirely sure why they did it this way, um, but they did. So as you can see, it's split into two pieces. Um, I think also yeah. So this way, look at it like this. Um, so this this piece right here would obviously go on the end of one of these, but I don't think. Yeah, like I th this th this is the part I don't understand. Like because you can't really. So if we look at this, oh, I guess you could actually flip this. Okay, I get it. I get it because this, uh, hold on, let, me, let me look at that again. <laughs> nope, not that one. Uh, this is down the middle. I think, no, I guess you could. I guess you could actually flip this. So you could have this facing either way. So that's actually a smart modular decision on their part. This piece goes on the end, one of these two end caps, and because of how this is set up, you're either going to have the uh, fire truck, which would come out of here, coming out of this side, like coming out of this side of the building, or like like the front of the building or the back of the building. So that's actually the more I really look at that, the more I think that that's a a smart um, modularization decision. You've got a few more fire station specific pieces uh, for cleaning up that. I'm not going to go into that in too great of detail. So here's that gas station that we popped inside of earlier. Um, 
here's that parking structure that we popped inside of before and actually you can do this so you can kind of see so you see all those scaffolding items that were in there are not in there because those are right here um, so you've got your actual individual gas pumps and then you've got side and then the interior pieces so that is that for that's all the prefabs um a lot of them i actually think that uh you get more than your you know value in this like in those individual prefabs in this asset so i definitely do recommend it for that um yeah i i do recommend this asset um Quirks aside, like the couple of quirks that I pointed out as we were going through them in kind of real time, those aside, I think this is a very good asset, and I do think it is worth the money. So let me know what you think. If you like this one, if you um, if you have this asset and you like it, let me know. If you don't, let me know or whatever. I'd be happy to discuss it. But uh, that'll be it for this one, and I will see everyone in the next one.